Hey guys, welcome back. This is Jury Rig Garage. It's been so long since we've talked to you guys. I forgot my password, so, you know, it is what it is. You know, it just happens to the best of us sometimes, but we are back. We're going to be making some videos. As you can see, the location has changed a bit. It is uh, a, a new new garage, new Jury Rig Garage. It's yeah, uh, rebranding. New house. New house, so. Yeah, guys, that is why I haven't posted in forever is because back in the like June, I was house hunting, I found a place, put in a bid. Now it is August 31st. I have no idea when you guys are probably gonna see this video. But yep, I'm a homeowner now and uh, got my own garage now. And it's big enough to pull a car in. No more sitting outside well, in I mean, the you say driveway. That. We'll see. The, the Bonneville fin here, I don't even know if I've talked about that on the channel, probably not. I do own a Pontiac Bonneville GXP now, and it's just a, a good deal that I picked up. But our main focus is on the Fiero, obviously. And this garage space is, I think, like 20 feet, and the car is 14 feet. So, I mean, that should fit. As long that as we only work, fit. as long as we only work on the Fiero. With, with the engine hoist, like in here, it'll fit. It'll be, it'll be good. It'll, it will be fine. But yeah, guys, I'm really excited. But uh, the garage is not finished set up yet. As you can see, I'm missing a toolbox. I'm also missing a uh, outlet from a welder. Well, technically so, so, you're not missing either of those because you didn't have those before. Yeah, I did. I had a, I had a, I had a dryer uh, outlet. You could, st well, okay. No. Well, you didn't have that in the garage, right? You didn't have the toolbox except that one. That's true. So yeah. you're not missing that. I'm upgrading from this little, I don't even know, Amazon toolbox. To another Amazon it's gonna be bigger box. than Isaiah's. Well, no, it's a Husky. But it's from Amazon, right? No, it's from uh, Home Depot. Oh, okay, okay. It's Husky. Uh, anyways, <laughs> yep. And then we're we'll wiring in a uh, 240 volt outlet. So I got a bunch of conduit. I'll show you guys how to do that on the panel. But uh, this is the storage that I did buy. Um, I'm still waiting on the Husky toolbox. Like I said, it's just coming after Labor Day. But got the cabinet shelving, and I got all this to hang up all our, uh, you know, engine stands. Our uh, car stand, jack stands, all that stuff. So this is coming along. Moving is a big process. There's a lot of, uh, you know, stuff. I mean, all these totes are still filled with miscellaneous stuff, wiring stuff, fabrication stuff, Tristan's Camaro stuff. Project F is literally in those boxes in the corner and in these boxes, the whole car. Which is deconstructed. And, and also the shed. And in the shed. So yeah, it is a process. It's it's going to be a while before this place is totally set and we're in full operation, but we're gonna do one key step, which is getting the welder outlet in here because Jury Garage, we do our own fabrication, you know? So I'm gonna get this set. Gonna be working on, uh, you know, some high voltage. So I'm gonna be totally safe and it's not, I mean, we're called Jury Rig and this is gonna be the Jury Rig special, but I'm gonna try to do it as safe as possible because I wanna burn down my house. Or kill yourself. Yep. I'll be, I did uh, text Tristan this morning saying I'm about to burn down my house. But we're gonna That's burn true. down the house today. All right guys, well, we're gonna go ahead and get set and uh, get started here. All right guys, so what we're going to be doing here, so I'm gonna be getting some plywood, which I just have scrap plywood out back. So I'm hoping I have a good size for it, but I'm going to remove a little bit of drywall here to expose the stud. Same as this is exposed. I'm going to make a panel that covers all these exposed wires. I'm going to uh, hole saw in there. Uh, or make a relief that way I can actually remove the panel without having to take this out ideally But uh, then I'm going to be putting this junction in about right here. It's going to be exposed conduit Which I have a bunch of it's going to travel up 90 Then you're going to travel over here And then it's going to 90 again across And I'm not going to have it interfere with the garage door Well, maybe I don't know. we'll see. I, you know, don't report me or anything like that, you know this is a residential install, it's all good. And then come over here, 90 down, into a junction box. That way, in the future, if I want to add an initial 240 volt outlet, I can do that. I can just run it over there. But junction box, and then straight down to the outlet where I'm gonna place right there. We're gonna be able to plug in my own welder. So, very simple, you know, no problem. Uh, if you guys are doing this at home, it's kind of expensive. You know, if you're doing this, you have to buy six gauge THHN. You have to buy three reels of it, measuring it out. I measured it to about 35 feet, about 40, just in case. So this was pretty expensive. I think this was like, I don't know, 60, $70 a strand. So close to $200 for all these. The uh, conduit itself, not so expensive. These are $8 a piece, which is pretty nice. Bunch of, uh, you know, random doodads, the outlet itself, some anchors, 240, or I guess the 50 amp breaker, the two pole breaker. Got to double check the uh, kind of Brand, this is square D, and then just the type of connectors have to match what breaker that you have. So double check that. 
then a bunch of other uh, couplers and doshins and some cement. But yeah, total, I think this was like 300-ish, 350. Not too bad. Yeah, and if you were to hire an electrician to do this, factor in the materials plus all their time to do it, so. Right. It could be kind of expensive. Don't, don't report Davis. This is all done to code. And uh, also, he's a certified electrician. Yeah. We just never talked about it before. Yeah, we're, we're professionals, right? I get paid to do this, you know? Right, except right now. But, you know, normally, yeah, it's, definitely. It's, it's all good. Wink, wink. So, uh, you know, on your panel here, you got to make sure that you got some extra, you know, spaces available. It's good when you're working on your, your panel to have a uh, fluke tester or a climb tools tester or whatever that just tests what's hot, what's not, you know? I think if I uh, do this, it'll tell you, like, you know, right there, that's a hot wire, these are all hot. So uh, you don't want to accidentally touch something that's hot because you'll die. What? Um, what I know, if that's what you want? It's crazy. You know, car batteries, like, if you come over here, who cares? Like, you touch car battery, nothing happens. This doesn't care, you know? You know, 120 volt, 240 volt, you touch a hot wire, you're probably not going to have a good day. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to try to do it. Being real here, I've been doing it as professionally as I can and as safely as I can. I've read into this stuff. Yeah, this is all residential code. Like, I'm not doing anything illegal here. Anyways, we're going to get started on this. I need to grab some plywood and then we'll start mapping it out. Nice. Noise. All right, guys, so we got the uh, pine board all cut out to fit over the uh, electrical box. So I just made a relief here to allow for us to have the uh, conduit come out. That was actually pretty dang good. Now we just need to like straight cut that stuff. That fits perfect too. Uh, yeah, I just want the relief. So like if there's ever a situation where I need to remove the uh, yeah, board, yeah. I can like pull it out and then over. Makes it sense. Versus just that. So just step in it again. It'll be shitty, but. Oh, that's not even. Oh, boy. <laughs> that's one way to do it. See, guys, we're, we're not called Jerry Rick for nothing. You know, we do what we gotta do, you know, to make it work. Let's, uh, work, yeah, like vacuum. Once this whole vacuum up, it'll look all good, you know? Then, I mean, I gotta say, it does look decent, you know? Like, it could be worse with, <laughs> with how we went about it. All right, guys, got the pine board up here. Right into an electrical main. <laughs> Still a fire department, you don't know nothing about it. Yeah, and then this gap will get covered by the actual... Uh, the panel. The panel, yep. That thing ain't going nowhere. You think four is enough? Yeah. But, I mean, you could throw in another two if you really want. Yeah, it's just... I mean, look how solid that is. And I'm not trying... Like, this isn't anything more than just to cover that, you know, for access or whatever. Yeah. So, we will have this right here where... That looks good. We'll need to uh, get that hole punched through. And then, once we have the conduit on here, I will uh, use some tappers to hold the bracket that'll hold this on. So, that's what's going to hold this on. So. Yeah. Yep, and uh, I don't know why, there's probably a reason, but they use these square driver bits for like everything electrical. I don't know why, but it's what they do. So we'll just pop this cap open. Just so we have access when we feed the wires through. Good idea. There we go. Noise, noise. All right, so I'm gonna put the, well, uh, I'm gonna shut off the breaker. We're gonna install the actual new breaker, flip it off or whatever. And then I'm just going to start routing the uh, conduit. And the last thing we'll do is basically pull the wires through the conduit to the panel and then turn the panel off once again. You don't want to work on a uh, hot panel and you'd probably kill yourself. So we're going to turn that off anytime we're touching it. And uh, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and get started here. All right, guys, we just got this uh, kind of anchored down and I'm using some, uh, I don't know what size these are, but I measured it with the pine board to make sure I'm not going through. They're very tiny. They do not go through, so I'm not in any risk of hitting any hot lines. So I'm just going to kind of start routing my, uh, you know, cable or the conduit run here. I'm not going to go overboard on the anchors, but uh, just basically going to then come out there. You yeah. can see the 90. It's also uh, dry fitted with no cement yet. So I'm going to run it and uh, we're just going to maybe set up a time lapse and uh, yeah, we'll be right back.
guys. So we're basically halfway through with the run. So I'm gonna take my fish tape, which I would just recommend getting fish tape that's long enough for the whole run. We're probably running 35 feet and this is 25. So what I'm gonna do is just do half and half. So I'm gonna start pulling the cable through. And then once we get to the point, we're kind of gonna build backwards. We're just gonna pull the rest through. And then once that point, we're just gonna join the two. So it should be pretty easy. So what I'll do is uh, I'm gonna reposition first over here. Yeah. Run the cable through and down, and uh, we will be able to snake the cables through. There you go. Yeah, well, yeah. So with that, what we'll do is we will just snake our wires up through the uh, hole that we made right here which I'm now realizing, you know, there's some PVC insert that you should put in there to protect the wire against the edges. I did not get that, but I do have a rubber isolator like kit for grommets or whatever. So I'm just gonna put a grommet on it. And then we will run the cable up through that hole, up through this hole here, <coughs> and then tape it to this and we'll pull it through and then we'll have our excess hanging off the edge. So, so we'll zip tie, or not zip tie, we'll get some tape and get these all together. Very nice. Look at that. Okay, so now I have to push this through. So I'm gonna go and start doing this. If you can just uh, hold everything. Oh yeah. All right guys, it's been a bit since we updated you. Tristan did have to leave, but he did help me get the rest of the run done. So all of the conduit is in place. We have a junction box. So if in the future I want to add another outlet somewhere over here for like a air compressor or, you know, whatever else, another welding machine, something, I don't know. I can do this or I could do that. Basically just pulled some extra uh, that's sitting in there. So we would cut it and splice it. So it'd be running off the same breaker, but that's, whatever i'm not going to be using both at one time so should be fine got a little bit of excess in here and pushed them in so i'll be able to cut and splice these in to my 240 volt outlet so this is just a leviton unit you just put the two hot and then the ground pretty simple and that bolts right up i do have a cover for that as well so it'll look prettier and then in here what i'll do is i'll shut off the main breaker and add the 50 amp fuse right there the white and black go to it because it's supplying two 120 volts for 240. And then the green ground will just go to one of these grounds here. Since Tristan's gone, I'm gonna do my best to record this. Probably be using the GoPro, uh, just setting it up so you can see. But I'm gonna go ahead and get splicing on this. Basically, I want everything done before I touch the panel. Right, guys gonna go ahead and kill the main power here so it's just a big one now power's off in the house just double check nothing's hot we are all good well these are to the breaker gonna be hot because uh you know that's how the power gets comes into the house so we're not gonna be touching that we're gonna be adding a breaker here all right got that side on just push this in there we go so that's the on position off we'll leave it off for now now i'm going to go ahead and route these cables so the white and black go to the breaker and the green goes to the uh grounds here all right guys i went ahead and got this all set so as you can see the green ground wire 
or neutral or whatever you want to call it. It's going to be ground in this case. It goes to the ground bus right there. I don't know if that's what it's called, but whatever. It goes here where all the other, you know, grounds are going. Then the hot, two hot wires, the white and black go to the breaker, which is in the off position. I did put black electrical tape and I want the extra distance and labeled it hot. Just want to make sure anyone who's touching this will know. So what I'm going to do here is go ahead and flip the breaker on. There we go. Power's back on. Now the breaker for the welder. On. No drama. I don't know if I was expecting drama. I'm glad there isn't, but you know, we'll go ahead and plug in the welder. The good old AHP Alpha TIG 203XI. Awesome welder. Oh dang, I put it upside down. Well, whatever. Nice. Now, power. There we go. Welder works. That is very unfortunate that it went in upside down because I planned around that. I was just like, I'm gonna put it in the right orientation no matter what, and then that happens. So uh, I might go in there and flip it. But there you go, welder's all up in operation. All right guys, I'm all done. I got everything all buttoned up. So I got the panel here. I wrote on 36 and 38, now that's the garage 240 volt. And uh, man, look how good it is. It looks just like all the others. <laughs> looks like it was here from the beginning. But uh, yeah, I'm really happy with how this uh, install finished. You know, I got that exposed wiring all closed up with the uh, plywood. I got the nice conduit. It goes all the way over to the outlet right over here. And uh, I did it off camera, guys, but uh, it was too o OCD. I flipped it. So now the welder will plug in properly. Plug in right there. And it works. So super excited with how this came out. And then I have the expandability. I got excess wire in there bundled up so I can just add another outlet if I need to. So guys, don't be discouraged on doing your own electrical, electrical work sometimes. Uh, definitely hire a expert, you know, a professional electrician, certified, all that. Um, you know, that's my actual personal advice, but if you feel like you're handy, you can probably handle some of this stuff. Some of the other things I did in the garage was I removed the fluorescent light bulbs and I just put outlets in the attic, or I guess just like where it connects the attic. That way I can use my own lights in here. These are all the lights from the previous house. So it's, it's fun to kind of just get into this stuff. Being a homeowner now, it's definitely, you know, I have more motivation to do this type of stuff, which is really cool. It's fun for me. But guys, that's going to do it for today. You'll probably see some more videos back at the old house because I have a huge backlog of videos regarding the Fiero. I have a whole series where we re rebuilt the new F23 five-speed transmission for it. I build motor mounts for it. I think you guys already saw the motor mounts, but uh, we got that all done and uh, excited for you guys to see that. But then next step here, now that I got the welder in, is move the Fiero in here so we can start working on it. I got a lot of things coming for the motor here. Unfortunately, some things that are stuck in the mail even, so we're gonna wait on that a little bit, but hopefully, you know, we can transition, I can get back to regular content, and we can get the Fiero up and running finally in the new house. But yeah, guys, I'm super excited. This is the 3.8 that's going in the Fiero. We're gonna turbocharge it. It's cammed, it's got ARP everything. It's gonna be awesome. So if you like to subscribe, that definitely helps us. If you wanna follow along, turn on notifications, like the video, that also helps me. But guys, thank you so much for watching. I know you guys, were looking for me to you know upload more frequently. I saw the comments every day of people asking where I was, so that's actually pretty cool that you guys were you know still watching while I was absent. I mean it was months that I hadn't uh, uploaded. So thank you guys for you know the dedicated viewers, and thank you guys you know who are new viewers. A uh, lot to come, and uh, we'll see you next time.